already. Did you look here. to open in prayer. Um, anybody want to open in prayer? No? Hey, Laura, turn that thing off. All right, let's close our eyes and get started. Um, Back here, come on, I should just go ahead and close it. It is warm. All right, let's pray. Yeah, you just do the camera thing, and when it's time, I'll let you know. Father, we come before you. Thank you for the time we get to do with the Bible study. And Lord, we just pray that we learn something new today. We pray, Lord, you just uh, move in a mighty way. And thank you, God, for everything that you've been doing for us, even through the storms, trials, good or bad. I pray, Lord, this week that you continue to be with us and keep us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So everybody have a good week. I know. Try to say me. Y'all come to Saturday, right? I know. I'm ready. I'm ready. I had a good report. So you guys doing good? Everybody doing good. We're going to learn today Sodom and Gomorrah. Anybody ever heard Sodom and Gomorrah? No. It's overseas. Okay. We're going to learn about God and the wrath, which means anger, that he gave upon the city of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. They were committing so much sin, whether it was with sexual relations with one another, drinking, um, idolatry, doing uh, worshiping other gods and stuff. So we're going to learn about that today. Sodom and Gomorrah. If you ever heard the story about the lady that turned into a pillar of salt, that's where the story came from. That was Lot's wife. We're going to first go to chapter 18 of Genesis, then get into Sodom and Gomorrah, so that way y'all can understand why it happened and what led up to it. Because sometimes you got to read that chapter before, before you can start. You don't have to touch that. No, I'm So, um... I do have a movie we're going to first look at that does pretty good at kind of just doing a quick breakdown of Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I learned something. Abraham actually had a little bit of doing a, a, a part of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, the angels, God sent the angels to Abraham, and Abraham was able to see kind of like, well, I don't want to say see, but they... Uh, God basically let him know what was going to happen. He was about to destroy the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Pay attention to certain things in the scripture we're reading because it can compare to your life. After a while, God doesn't keep playing around and he will destroy in certain ways and you don't want that. So let's take a look at this. It's pretty good. Lot went to the men who were engaged to his daughters and said, hurry up and get out the Lord was going to destroy the city. But they thought he was joking and they laughed at him. Early the next morning, the two angels tried to make Lot hurry and leave. They said, Take your wife and your two daughters and get away from here as fast as you can. If you don't, every one of you will be killed and the Lord destroys the city. Lot answered, There's a town near here called Zoe. It's only a small place, but my family and I will be safe if you let us go there. All right, right. Go there. he answered. As a favor to you, I won't destroy the little city you're talking about. But I already know. Escape. 
Stop there, because I can't do anything until you arrive there safely. Lot and his family arrived in Zoro just as the sun was coming up. And the Lord began to destroy Sun and Gamora. He caused fire and burning sulfur to fall from the sky. He destroyed both cities, along with the other villages and towns in the valley, and all of the people who lived there. Even the vegetation was wiped out. But Lot's wife never made it. She lagged behind her husband and looked back despite the angel's advice and turned into a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and went to the place where he stood before the Lord. Abraham looked down into the valley toward the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He saw clouds of smoke rising from the land, like smoke from a furnace. When God destroyed the cities of the valley where Lot lived, he remembered his promise to Abraham and saved Lot from the terrible destruction. Lot was afraid to stay in Zor. So he and his two daughters went to live in the mountains in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Everywhere on the earth men and women marry and have a family. But our father is old, and there are no men around here to give us children. So let's get our father drunk with wine. Then we can have sex with him. That way, we can use our father to keep our family alive. The next day the older daughter said to the younger daughter, I did it. I said with our father last night. Now it's your turn. Let's get him drunk again tonight. Then you go in and sleep with him too. That way we'll both have children through our father to ensure our family will not come to an end. So that night the two girls got their father drunk with wine. Then the younger daughter went and had sexual relations with him. But once again he was too drunk even to know she was there. That's how Lot's two daughters had children. The older daughter named her son Moab, who was the ancestor of the Moabites. The younger daughter named her son Benami, and he is the ancestor of the Ammonites. of the earth 
shall be blessed in it. For I have chosen him that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. We have verse 20. Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very great, I will go down to see whether they have done all together according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So he's, he's going to come down as angels, two angels. He's going to send to Sodom and Gomorrah to see what they're doing. Now, how many times do you think God has sent the an angel our way? Just to see what you do. Young people, older people, it doesn't matter. You can run into an angel, don't even know it. And they look just like a regular person. The Bible tells us to be careful for we entertain strangers that can be angels. So you never know how and when God is going to come down in your face and you don't know it. So always behave. Always. Okay? Let's look at verse 22. Uh, which one is it? Is it a Kiva? <laughs> I don't know your name. <laughs> All right, you read this one, 22 through 26. And we're in Genesis chapter 18. 22 through 26. Go ahead. Nice and loud so they can hear you in the morning. Go ahead. So I don't know. I can't nobody hear you. I know you're talking about me. She can talk loud, y'all. So the man turned from there and went toward Sodom. 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 Mm -hmm. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the writer the writers? The righteous. With the wicked wicked, wicked <laughs> suppose there if fifty writers within the city will you then sweep away the place and not spare okay. it from the
can run out sometimes. It's just like a parent with a child. You tell you over and over and over and over and over. And once that grace gets tired, you're going to get punished. And you just got to take that punishment. So God is like, look, I'm going to try to be nice, but I've already given them chance after chance after chance to get right. So remember that. Even young people, chance after chance, you got a certain amount of time to get right. Good, that's good right here. No, no, that's enough. That's enough. It's a skirt. All right. Um, my husband, can you read 31 through 33 for me? He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. Mm -hmm. The answer, For the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Mm -hmm. Then he said, Oh, not the Lord be mm -hmm. angry. He said, oh, oh, let not the, the Lord be angry. Mm -hmm. And I will speak again. But this once, suppose 10 are found there. Mm -hmm. He answered for the sake of ten, and will not destroy it. And the Lord <coughs> went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. All right. Now, a little bit about Abraham. Y'all heard the song, Father Abraham. I mean, his sons, Abraham. That's him. He's very close to the Lord. We are the descendants of Abraham. Abraham didn't really have a lot of children. But we are his descendants. So that's a little bit about Abraham. He's very close to God. He can hear when God is speaking. And he's very obedient. If God tells him get up and move today, he's getting up and moving today. So he's asking God again. And as you see, the number went down. It went to 20. And then it went to what number? 10. 10. Okay? Do you think God found 10 people righteous? Nope. Let's look at Genesis 19, verse 1 through 39. Now, as you're turning to Genesis 19, I want you to look at your life. Would God consider you righteous? That's something to think about. We can think that we're going to heaven. It don't matter if you're a pastor, evangelist, or a TDJs, and you can still go to heaven for not living right. According to what? Bible. It's okay to be saved. That's wonderful. But we tend to forget we have to live according to what? Let's say it out. The Bible. Say it loud. Let me hear it. The Bible. The Bible. Bible. It's our blueprint. We all so so that is we so smart and I love it. Okay? Young people, older people, doesn't matter. Y'all are of age that if you die today, you gotta listen to the Heavenly Father, and you're gonna be in front of the Heavenly Father. It's not what your mama did. See it? See it? See it? See it? Oh, yeah. See it here. Genesis 19. Let's go ahead here. Uh, let's read 1 through 3 here. Okay. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was, Sodom. Okay. And Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. Mm -hmm. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth. And said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and bathed unleavened mm -hmm. bread, and they ate. Very good. So we got two angels coming to Saul. And Lot and his wife. Two daughters, and they had, they were engaged to two men, were already there in the midst of it all. This is where we need to really start paying attention to comparing it to our life. Because you'll see as we get further, and we pay attention to Lot's wife and what she did, you have to see how we can compare that to, okay, let me look at my life. So he's, in, he's allowing the angels to come live with him. Not live with him. I mean, come to his uh, place where he's at right now. So we're going to go to the next verse. Let's see here. It says, verse 4, But 
before they lay down, men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house, and they called to Lot. Now this is why God is already about to destroy these folks, because they something else. They said, where are the men who came to you tonight? Who were the men that came to them? Anybody remember? We just said. Okay. That's the name of the city. What, what men came to them? Was, yeah, two angels. So they're looking for these two angels. So they don't know they're angels. So they just said, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Now, don't be over here being goofy and stuff because the Bible just going to break it down as it is because they doing wicked stuff. So you'll see. Number six. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. So in other words, when they say they want to know them, that means sexual relations, homosexuality. You got homosexuality of lesbianism and homosexuality of gayness. Now you're trying to do the gay part and break down just like it is. So that's what's going on. Understand? Everybody understand? Okay, because they didn't say it, but that's what they're doing. Remember, it's a wicked, wicked place. They do everything you can think of in the book. Now let's look at verse 9. But they said, stand back. And they said, this fellow came to sojourn, and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against the man Lot, and drew near to break the door down. So they're trying to break their way in. Lot is telling them, no, you can't have them. I got two daughters who's never had sexual relations. Y'all can have them. But not these two. They're the angels now. Let's look at verse 10. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Now we're going to look at verse 11. All right. Zari, read 11 through 14 up here. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house were small and great, so that they were warming themselves out, groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city? Bring them out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place, because the outcry against his people has become great before the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Hmm. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, sons Who are to marry his daughters? Up, get up out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed, what does that say? To his son in law. To but he jesting. seemed to his sons in law to be just. Which means they thought he was joking. They thought he was being funny. Like, ha, ah, okay, yeah, sure God is going to do it. That's when we start looking at our life. When God brings people to you, and you know it's from God, but you don't want to listen. Then how how the joke's on you? The joke is not on God. When he do whatever, he say he do whatever punishment he give you. When he tell you, Shantae get up, go over here. And Shantae say, uh -huh, I'm not going to do that here. I don't think I heard. But then God sent somebody behind that. And then somebody said the same thing. And she's like, I think I know God said that, but I'm sitting on this. No, God is not saying that. I don't even want to move. But then she have a dream. And God told her again. And she still stayed. And then something happened. Who's that on? Her. Not on God. We have to learn to be obedient. We have to discern the spirit of the right spirit. If that's the right spirit speaking, God will back it up. He's going to send confirmation. He will. He will send it in dreams. He'll send it through a person, prophet, or however he need to do. He will send confirmation. So they thought he was joking. <laughs> That would be Lot's sons-in-laws, or to be son-in-laws. They thought he was joking. Let's look at 15, Aliana. Read this 15 through 19. At morning, 
dawn, the angels urged urge Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. Hmm. But he lingered. So the man seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand. The Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. Mm-hmm. And as they brought and as they brought them out, one one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, O oh, no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and he has shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills. Let the disaster overtake me, and I die. <laughs> Now, the angels are like, hey, we got to keep it. We got to keep it going. We got to move. He's about to get ready to destroy it. So he's giving them a heads up. Try to get up out of here. Well, since your son-in-law is on the stage, don't nobody care. We're going to take whoever want to follow who? The Lord's, the Lord's command, and we're going to go. Everybody else want to stay? Go on about your business. We're not worrying about it. That's your choice. Everybody has a choice if they're going to follow God. You have a choice, you have a choice, all of us have a choice. As I said before, y'all young people are of age to make the right choices. Same with, we do with the parents. You got a choice to listen to the parents or not. If you listen, you might find more favor. If you don't, life may be hard. So, they had to listen. And what you think they did? Lot did what was said. But Lot was like, hey, well, hold on. Let us go to this certain place. And I think it was called Zor. Let us go to that certain place and be able to be there safely. Because he didn't want to go to just the hills. Because he didn't want to die, you know, anything in case of disaster ended up blowing upon him. But God showed him favor because of his obedience. You have to be obedient to whatever God is saying. I don't care how it may sound crazy, but oh well. It's crazy in your mind, but not crazy to God. Remember, God see all and he see everything. So he already knows who's about to destroy it right now. They had no time because the angels just came to their house. It's not like they was there for five days or something. They didn't stay. They came to that. They had a job to do. So let's go here. What's your name? America. America. Go ahead with it. Behold, the city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. It is not a little one. And my life will be saved. He said to him, Zor, Z-O-A-R, Zor. One thing the angel said was, escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. That's how much God had favor on them. God was not going to destroy it until they arrived. And he wanted them to hurry up, because God was tired, and he was ready to destroy the city. So they had to feet, feet, you know, isn't that French? I think that's French. I mean, move quick. Let's get up out of here. Right, so just imagine, like, man, God, like, I want you to move to Texas tomorrow. You need to make it quick. And you're like, man, I don't got the money. But God said, don't worry about that. We got it. I just need you to move. You got to be obedient. He was obedient. I love that about Lot. He was obedient. Okay, so now we got Lot, his wife, and the two kids. Who's left behind? Do y'all remember? The son in law. The angels are waiting for them to get to Zor, so that way they can get ready to tear it up. <laughs> yeah. God about to tear it up in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's a sin. The city of sin. Okay. Now let's look at 23 through 26. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zor. It took them a little while to get there. That means they arrived by morning. And that was early morning because the sun was just rising. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Why did God 
uh, rained out sulfur and fire again. Somebody tell me, why did God destroy the city of Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah? I want to make sure we understand. Why? Their wicked ways. Thank you. Wicked ways. So, if God could give them a lot of grace, and they chose not to take it, understand, you got that same grace. If you choose not to take it, your life will not be what you think it's going to be. And you will suffer for the consequences. Where? In hell. You don't want to go there. It's not worth it. It's not worth the disobedience. It's not worth it trying to hang with the crowd. It's not worth it to try to live like those outside of the world. You're either going to live for Jesus or you're going to live for the devil. And the Bible said, that if you're not living for Jesus, your master is the devil. Okay? The Bible said that. You got either Jesus or the devil. Which one? You want that? 25 says, and he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. He destroyed the whole thing. Understand, when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, nobody can live there ever again. And if you look at it now, for those who don't want to believe the Bible, this right here, you should believe the Bible is real and God is real. Because if you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, nobody lives there. It's a pillow of salt. Let's look at 26. But Lot's wife, didn't God instruct them not to look back? Mm -hmm. Right? But Lot's wife behind him looked back. And she became a pillow of salt. salt. What did God say? Don't look back. Don't look back. She okay. became a pillow of salt. She just has to look back. When you are walking this walk with God, we don't look back. We don't go back to the old ways. There's no need to go back to the old ways. Say you're going to make it look so good. And you're going to make it look so great. And then when you're following it, it's going to falter. Because it's not walking in the way that God told you to walk. Keep it pushing. Keep going. You know the song? I won't turn back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. No. That's the real song. Shut up, girl. I'm be playing. Let me sing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for real, you are not to go back. Y'all, y'all are baptized. You walking with God. You keep it pushing. Young people, old people, I don't care how old you are. You take a big step and you keep going. You get out in this world. You keep going. We don't go back to the old like we don't know what's going on or who we serve or how mama or daddy taught you. She looked back. Why did she look back? Not just because of curiosity, because she still was liking what was going on back there. She wanted to go back over there. It's really what she wanted to do. She could have stayed for all I could. I would have been like, you could have just stayed and just burn up with the town, but she could have had a look back. And then God is letting you know that when you look back, there's some consequences. When you go back, there's some consequences. Yes, he can't forgive you, but to keep playing with his grace will lead to consequences. We don't keep playing with God's grace. Let's look at this uh, last couple ones here. 27 and 28. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the valley. And he looked and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. That whole place was on fire. Just smoking up. All of those bodies are gone. Just imagine how people, how many people went to hell that day. All them bodies were gone. And on top of it, Lot lost his wife. A sad moment, but a teaching moment. Don't turn your back on God. Don't turn back to where you came from. Move forward with God. It don't matter how hard it gets. It gets hard, yes, such as life. Jesus didn't say it was going to be easy peasy. He had it the most hardest. If he can make it with the grace of the Holy Ghost, we're going to make it. Because God said he won't put more on us than we can bear. Okay? Let's look at 29. This will be the last verse, I think it is. So it was that when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. So, 
You remember what Abraham, what he promised Abraham? And he said, if he even found ten, he'll say. And he found really Lot. Look, Lot really was the one that had the favor. So because of Lot, his family was able to be saved. So he found Lot, but he saved Lot. So he kept his word on that. Now, I have here, because you know, people, as I said earlier, always feel like the Bible's not real. It was a video I watched before where this lady went to Sodom and Gomorrah, and you can see the pillar of salt where Lot's wife was. So, it is real. It is real. Noah's Ark is real. They found it too. It is real. Nothing about this Bible is fake. I don't care how it's at. It's real. This was real. If God can destroy a city like that, imagine what else he can do. As you see, when we have hurricanes, Louisiana gets destroyed all the time. There's a lot of voodoo and witchcraft that goes on there. And then we got other places. I don't know what's going on with Florida. Maybe something going on, because they always get hit. You got other places overseas that go home. You got places, um, Haiti got a lot of earthquakes and a lot of hurricanes. They get destroyed all the time. There's another place with voodoo and witchcraft. God is not playing, and he's not playing with you, and me, and nobody else. I've been called fake pastor, all the way from fake pastor down to, I don't even want to say what they said, because it won't even good. But when I give the word, I'm going to try my best to live, because I don't got time to go to hell for anybody. Not you. Nobody. I'm going to try my best to live, because God is not playing. And if y'all pay attention, God is taking us out. Young people, God is taking y'all out too. A teen just died. She collapsed in high school the other day. Dead, gone. You thought she knew she was going to die that day? No. Y'all better stop playing with God. No matter about your age. Stop playing with him. Y'all not no little, little babies. He'll take them and take them home. But you guys of age, stop playing with him. One day you here, one day you gone. One day Sodom was there, one day Sodom was gone. They didn't even know what was coming. God was just done. So, that it behoove you to behave. And watch what you do and be obedient to your parents too. So let's look at this video. Let me try to get it to uh, where I want it. Um, I don't know, I probably can't do it uh, Let's do this. I shall pull it up. Let me pull it up because. Um, um, certain spot I want it to be at and that way I can go ahead and just watch it. At Credit Karma, zero is our favorite number. Zero clouds, zero mosquitoes, zero in... Mount Sodom, which is around 10 kilometers, 6 miles long and 1.5 kilometers, 1 mile across, is essentially a giant salt trap. It is unique in that it is a salt trap in a dry region. The central part of Mount Sodom contains a cave with its entrance underneath the lock known as Lord's Wife. And it can be clearly seen west on Lord 90. The cave has two chimneys. At the base of which chart panel were formed from the dissolving salt that combines to form one tunnel close to the cave entrance. So where she's at is and this is more. place. Wow. Can you see the lock up? Lord's wife? Underneath, it's a cave. Where they buy it. 
Look at this. Wow. Huge lock, yeah? <laughs> ah, from here, it's, it's, uh, you can see it very well. God's wife. Mm -hmm. That's, it's salt, you know? Look. And the salt here is so bitter. <laughs> like it, it, it's not a sauce that it, you can cook with. It's so bitter. Even uh, when this, uh, when you are like f uh, swimming or floating in the Dead Sea, when you happen, that uh, the water happen to enter in your eyes. Wow! You have to wash your eyes with fresh water. Look, guys, everywhere is salt. Can you see? Wow! Wow, guys, look. <laughs> is it? Am I the only one who feel like this thing is awesome? The place is awesome, incredible. Mama 
did this. My mama did that. Just to try to get fit in with somebody else's family. You know what I'm saying? Dude, don't, don't do that. I really don't think, I think teenagers these days just don't respect the people who raised them from point A to point B. When I was, when I was coming up, I was 14. I had to take care of myself when I was 14 years old. I never had a father. I don't have my grandma. I left my mom for my mom in there. So, but I learned the world on my own. So I learned, I learned how to respect my grandma regardless of what I was going So just respect the parents. Respect what they do for you. Because you guys be on your own, so it will be a lot easier for you because God is here. But if you leave before and disrespect the parents, disrespect them for all this shit I've done, it make her look bad. You're like, why my daughter doing this? Or why my daughter doing this? And going to stay with somebody? And I know what I did. and know what I raised. Y'all just, it's just, I don't know why teenagers do that these days. But they do. Just like I say, the old model and everything, just respect the parents and love both the rest of them with all Cause your mom, she ain't gonna be there too long. She gotta make sure y'all going the right direction. That's hard. That's, I mean, she by herself. It's very hard. She gotta be a father and a mother. Even though y'all have a father. And still go through her own. But she still gotta go through her. Cause she gotta learn how to be a father. But she ain't even here to be a father. Mm-hmm. Cause we all got different, I mean, my wife and her got different priorities. I'm most of a discipline guy. I'm supposed to be disciplined guy. Keep your job disciplined and keep your stuff focused. Mama supposed to uh, learn you how to be a woman. She's supposed to learn you how to be a wife. I'm pathetic. I bet you know, one of y'all that girls sit right here know how to be a wife. Here. You not be a wife? You not be a wife? You not be a wife? That's so cute. She teach, she's supposed to teach you that. So before y'all leave her nest, she's supposed to teach you how to be a wife. So, get everything you can from her. Rip it. Mm-hmm. Rip it. Cook it. Ask her. How to take care of that. Oh. Ask her. Mm-hmm. From y'all husband, the husband y'all get. He gonna respect that. If you don't know that, if you don't know how to do that, that's what he gonna find somebody who's gonna hire You be like, where my husband at? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm over there for whatever that he can cook soul food. I'm over there that one. I don't need you. You know what I mean? So try to learn what you can from your mom. Like I said, she, she got the qualification to be a wife. God gave it to her. Just learn what you can from her. And so when you move to get your husband, you can support him. Because all the husband wants is, what you want in a wife is peace. peace. He should, when they come home from work, he don't want to hear no yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping. Just put you on top of that roof. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't got time for it. The Bible said, better to live on the top of the roof than in the house with a naked wife. It says that in the book of Proverbs. Yep, yeah, yeah, because you leave some, I mean, I might, I might be perfect. I might leave some stuff out. My wife, yeah, she gets on me, yes. But, you don't want to keep hearing it. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. I ain't got time to worry about it. But I'll make sure, you know, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? I'll make sure that. But I want, a man don't want to hear a naked wife. He want to come to his wife, she come and give him love, love and to just be, be, there. be there for her, him. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I want all y'all ladies to be like that. And since you touch the life over God, just respect. Learn to respect for your boyfriend, to get friends. Just don't be getting friends and learn that that friend should learn to respect you first. Mm-hmm. If he don't respect you, you don't need him. If you don't, and if he don't respect his mother, Definitely, he might respect you. And he can be pretty all he wants to. He can go about his business. He can be pretty all he wants to. Don't bring the cute. Don't, don't let the cute fool you. Yeah, don't let. And don't put the ugly ones to the side either, because one day when they can it's fix the themselves up. It's the respect you want. Yep. She good? Okay. Now, come again, then. He's still talking to you. Yeah, you know, it's like saying, you know, I'm straight from my own. Learn what you can from your mom while she did. That was wonderful. Thank you. Take heed to those words. Because 
the same, same way God can let Sodom and Gomorrah go, same way he can let you go. And the Bible speaks on what is going on with, with the young people. Because of sin, disobedience is why we have a lot of young people doing what they're doing. Satan is coming after you guys. Y'all don't want y'all. The way we were raised, y'all won't give a hand. A smack in the mouth, oh, y'all ready to fight. and curse us out. Back then, you better take that smack and you better do better and go about your business. But now, it's like, oh, we can't do, touch We can do a thing. I had got so embarrassed when I was young. Lord Jesus. <laughs> I didn't even do the same. The boy who with me put left some batteries in, in my little pouch. When my pouch didn't wear around like this, fatty, fatty. I let him hold my fatty, fatty, fatty. We went to the store. Uh, he put up, he stole some batteries and left a battery in my pet pouch. My mama had uh, said, we skipped school that day. You tell me you didn't go to school. My mama had said, boy, where you been? You been? I've been looking for you. I was at the store with my friends and stuff like that. I said, you didn't even go to school because they called and told me you come. I said, what's it? She got that bill out. There were a whole bunch of people in the, in the neighborhood. They mm -hmm. don't let me come. <laughs> man, Anthony had it. Uh, my, my mom said, Anthony, forget him. Run him. Hurt him, man. I'm about to kill him. Got the little power, mm -hmm. took it off. She said, where you get money to get these like, babies in? I said, I ain't had to get no babies. I ain't had nothing. <laughs> My friend had my power, she left it in there. Boy, she told me, oh, you thought you first thing on mine, oh, I stole it. Yeah, he, he, didn't didn't do it. Do it. he didn't do it, but he was accomplice, but he didn't know he was accomplice. Yeah, so he's told, she she told me, told me up in front of all them folks, it better be so bad, that changed my life, man. I would never forget that. <laughs> I mean, it, my life Dang. changed right there. I don't have my I was just so embarrassed. <laughs> all the people around in my neighborhood, they just watched me get an ass with me in front of everybody. <laughs> but excuse me, you know, watch me get a whip in front of everybody. Excuse me. Well, it was one of those A W S whoops. That was a whoop, and that was a Madea whoop. Oh, like, Lord. I'm changing. I'm changing. You never got whooped, but she must have been good. Either that or you can face your life. You be getting away with everything. You trying to blame the sisters. Oh, okay. Who the oldest? You not you. See, the oldest, the oldest, between that oldest one and you, maybe the middle one might feel left out. The oldest one gonna get it off. The youngest is supposed to be like, let me behave. That's how it's supposed to be. You know, I'm just <laughs> so I hope y'all took heed to what he said because God is not playing with us right now. He's not playing with us anymore. And Satan wants y'all. God ain't got baptized. He really wants you now. Yeah. He gonna come bring all these men in front of you. He gonna bring friends in front of you. Y'all gonna try to talk back. If your mama slap you and she tell me she slapped you, and y'all got mad, I'm gonna slap you too. Well, we had that back in the day. One, the one, you got hit with a so and so. The, the neighbor next door will get you too if they find out. That's how we were raised. Now y'all wanna kill the parents. Y'all killing the grandparents to the cell phone. Killing the parents because the parents said no. Uh uh. Back in the day, yeah. the neighbors, back in the day, the neighbors used to take up for the parents. They ain't got that no more. Not really. Because, <laughs> you know, if you got much. around the hood, they got people that keep, you know, keep. Not just the hood, but that's, 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 so they're taking guns and shooting them, man. They're shooting the parents and stabbing them up. It, it's just ridiculous. But that's what Satan's agenda is. He likes that wicked Sodom and more. Don't let him put that wicked Sodom and more in your heart. Remember, God knows the heart and the yeah, attitude. The world is just like that, man. Okay? The world is this world is getting worse and worse. And God is cracking down. Back in the Bible times, God would kill you, poof, just like that. Look at Ananias and Sapphira. When they lied, he killed them on the spot. Boom, that boom. Just we'll, we'll talk about that. They just died right at the door. Boop. And I believe it was Peter. I think it was Peter. I have to make sure I tell y'all right. And he asked the husband, "What you do with the money?" He lied. Gone. Buried him. The wife came behind, and she said the same thing and lied. Gone. Buried her too. Right there. So imagine you told a lie to your mama, and God said, "Oh, you want to lie?" Boom. Gone. 
You never know who comes in your school, just like Appalachia, you don't know who's going to shoot it up. And don't be ashamed. If anybody say, if you love Jesus, stand up, I'll shoot you. Don't be ashamed, because God can do anything. I've heard many stories where God stopped that gun from shooting out. It locked up. Jesus stood up for you, you stand up for him. Understand? Young people, because y'all are behind us. I'm 38 now. I might die tomorrow. Y'all are next. That's it. Y'all are the generation, and I'm going to make some more generations, and I got to raise them according to what? The Bible. Train the child the way she go. Now, it's up to you if you're going to listen or not. And you know what consequences you get. All right. Anybody else have any other comments? All right. Let's stand up. And let's pray so we can go ahead and finish our Bible study. Thank you guys for joining us online. If you wasn't online, able to watch the whole thing, we appreciate it. We we'll try to have Bible study Mondays at 6 p.m. Thank you all for coming out. I know it's a little fried, and I appreciate it. So that I see a little baptized children back. <laughs> and Saturday, yes, just make sure you be here. Saturday. Thank you guys. I want to hear some testimony. <laughs> so, <laughs> they just turned to look at you. That's all right. That's all right. That's good because they see what God's doing in your life. So, you know, God is real. Let's close our eyes. Father, thank you for this opportunity to just be able to um, gather together in your name in one roof and freely be able to do it and to get to learn about your word. Father, I pray that we walk in your way. Help us to not turn back to our old ways. Help us move forward. Protect these children. Protect their mind. Protect their hearts as they go out to this world. As they get ready to step into their life as young adults. Protect them in all that they do. Help them to be obedient. Help them be obedient to their parents. Help them be obedient to your word and to you, Father. For you are their Father. And I pray, Father, that they're not afraid to stand up and say they love you, Jesus. And let them not be afraid of Satan, but to know that they can rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that whether people talk about them, good or bad, that they know who they are in you. They are a child of God and who they are in you in Christ, Father. I pray your strength upon each and every one of us as we go about our journey this week. Protect us to and from school. Protect us to and from work. Protect us in our homes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We said, Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the heaven Amen. That's our thing. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can do it.